Welcome, everyone. Uh, the uh, CCCA, the Cavendish Community Conservation Association, is again sponsoring a candidate's forum for the position of representative in the Vermont House of Representatives um, to represent Baltimore, Cavendish, and Wethersfield uh, in the House of Representatives. Um, the uh, event is hosted by Okimo Valley TV. Uh, and the candidates uh, this year uh, are John Arison of Wethersfield, uh, Democratic, and Stu Lindbergh of Cavendish, Independent. Unfortunately, due to prior commitments, Stu is unable to attend uh, this evening's forum. So let's start by asking John to talk about himself a little bit. John, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rolf. Um, once again, my name's John Arison. Uh, I live in Weathersfield up near the uh, meeting house, and I r was raised and born in uh, Chester, Vermont, and attended schools in Chester and moved to Weathersfield in 1986. Uh, I've been active in my communities since early 20s. I um, was a 30-year veteran with both Chester Fire Department and the Scutney Fire Department. Uh, I served on the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Adjustment. I spent 16 years on the Weathersfield Select Board. I've been a trustee of the uh, Weathersfield Historical Society, and I've been a uh, director on uh, Springfield Area Public Access, SAPA, which I believe is gonna uh, also carry this event uh, for the viewers that are uh, on SAPA. Um, this will be my uh, second term if I'm elected. Uh, two years ago was, was an entirely different environment than it is today. Uh, our first complete year was done virtually and we didn't have to go to Montpelier. And even the first two weeks of the second year, uh, 2022, was, was virtual. Uh, for myself personally, it, it worked out fine, but many of the veterans felt that it wasn't uh, working. Um, so anyway, I, I fully anticipate there'll, there'll be no interruptions with, with being in Montpelier in person. And, 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 and to be honest, uh, it, interfacing with fellow legislators is not the same looking at a, at a screen as it is when you can talk to them at lunch. and in the hallways and, and a lot of the, the, the camaraderie and, and friendships, that's where it's developed. Um, it's interesting because at the beginning of the session, they ask you for five choices of committees to be on. And uh, my background, I'm a, I was an electrical contractor for uh, 35 years uh, and recently retired out of that business. So uh, my choices did, uh, did not include the education committee, uh, but that's the, the committee that I got assigned to. And at first I was pretty uncomfortable uh, um, because a lot of things were going on that I didn't understand, but it, it really doesn't take too long to get into the groove and start to pick up the pace and, and understand what people are talking about. And it, it's been um, uh, rewarding. Um, experience being on education, it's very important. Um, the, the, it, the education fund is, is the largest fund in the entire state. Um, so it, there's an enormous amount of money that flows through the agency of education. And we did some important work over the last two years, and, and I'm proud to say that one bill that I worked on extensively with a Republican friend of mine uh, from Rotland City uh, was a school facilities bill. And, th and that uh, fell more into my wheelhouse. And I'm proud to say that that bill passed uh, both chambers and the governor's uh, signature and, and both chambers, it was bipartisan support. Um, other than that, I think we can get, go ahead with some of the questions. Uh, fine, good. So I'll, I'll follow that up. And that is, by the way, quite a resume. So I think you're, you're quite well qualified from the sound of it. Thank you. <clears throat> and it's good to hear that, that you will uh, are prepared to go back if you're elected. So that is important. Um, John, are there any specific issues that you 
think are, are more pressing than any others in this coming session? I think we're going to find that uh, uh, continued uh, discussion and trying to find funding uh, for housing. Um, I was really surprised when I've been door knocking in, in the villages at the number of houses that are now tied up in Airbnb. Uh, that takes them off the market for people to live in. Um, I, I think that's something that, that the municipalities and the state have got to get a handle on. Um, I was also surprised at the number of, of uh, vacant buildings in, in the villages that uh, could be brought online for, for housing. Uh, one thing that's going to be really, really different for me uh, in the coming session as opposed to the last session. In the last session, uh, there were tens, ten billion dollars coming into the state from the federal government, and it really was a challenge to figure out where to assign it and spend it. And most, all of that money is now committed in one place or another, uh, including a lot of it in education. And this coming session is going to be, go back to pre-COVID levels where anything that's proposed in the state legislature has got to go through ways and means how we're going to pay for it. Uh, we're required to balance the budget, and that's going to be an absolute requirement on any bills uh, that, that are going to make it to the governor's desk. And, and it's going to be a challenge, and, and it's going to be a whole lot different for myself um, watching the pennies and thinking, where's the money going to come from? Um, I believe that there, my, my gut feeling is that, that nobody is, is going to be proposing anything that requires additional taxes. But once again, it's a new session. You don't know where it's going to go. Um, one thing that was uh, eye-opening for me uh, in my first term was the number of bills that are presented. I think there was almost 900 bills that came up. Needless to say, not very many of them get, even get looked at. They get what we call on the wall, and the chair decides which ones are going to be discussed and, and sets the priorities. Um, so the, the coming session is going to be a whole lot different for me. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm interested that you cite the housing issue as as a very critical one, and it appears that it is for many reasons, among them the Airbnb conversion. Uh, so that'll be, we'll follow that with keen interest. Um, so um, do you um, have any, any views on the um, proposed amendment for the uh, reproductive rights issue, uh, the constitutional amendment? My view is that I think it's unfortunate that the government was involved in the discussion from the first place. Um, but once the Pandora's box is open and the court started making decisions on behalf of women's rights, the decision whether to have an abortion should be made between the woman, the doctor, possibly the clergy, and hopefully the man. Um, the constitutional amendment, um, pass or fail, will not change the existing laws. There, there's been a certain amount of misinformation that's been traveling around that this is going to allow abortions up to uh, third trimester. And existing laws do not allow that. Uh, the only time after the second trimester that anybody can have an abortion, it has to be a problem with the, with the fetus. Or, or the baby at that point, or the woman's health, it's very limited, and it has to go to UVM Medical Center for review, and the abortion has to be done at UVM. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that, uh, that we've become so extreme in, in some areas. I'm, I'm proud of Vermont, the way Vermont is handling this, but it really bothers me when people uh, want to defund like Planned Parenthood, because Planned Parenthood's uh, goal is not to provide abortions. Their goal is to prevent the abortion, or excuse me, to prevent the uh, pregnancy in the first place, and that's it's, it's a noble goal. Thank you for that insight. Um, let's see, going down, um, 
the list here. Um, term limits, do you have any views on term limits? Uh, for, against, or maybe some other suggestions? Right now, Governor, Senate, and House are all two-year terms, so it means a, a rather large turnover. Uh, this time, uh, the House, uh, seven chairmanships of committees, the people are choosing not to run, so we're going to have seven new, ter new uh, chairs. Uh, the Senate is, is, is experiencing a similar proportional uh, turnover. Uh, if it was staggered in some way, um, maybe the House should stay at two years. But if the Senate, if they could uh, run it out to four years, you wouldn't have the, the tremendous changeover. What, what, what that's going to, um, it's going to make it really hard to get out of the, the starting gate um, effectively in, in the coming session with all the new chairs, because it takes, takes a while to get your feet on the ground and, and know what's going on. As far as the governor's position's concerned, that definitely should be four years. Uh, whether there should be term limits, I hate to throw somebody out that um, is truly doing a, a, a really good job um, because a, a number comes up. On the other hand, sometimes people stay in longer than they should. And so I, I think people need to, uh, candidates and, and elected officials need to understand when, when their time is up and, and when, when to get out. Uh, to put an artificial number on that, I, I don't think is going to be helpful. It's an interesting point of view. I think the, the risk of losing talent and experience uh, certainly is, is something that should be taken very seriously. Indeed. Uh, I recall working with members of the legislature who were there for many, many years, and, and the reason for their, their tremendous effectiveness often was the fact that they'd been there so long. They knew the, the, the challenges, they knew the people, and they, they knew the process. And so they were in a position to make very, very wise judgments in terms of guiding legislation through the House. Uh, so, Institutional knowledge, is you can't replace it. Um, even, like I said, I've, I spent 16 years on the Weathersfield Select Board, and I still get calls once in a while from one of the selectors or the, or the town manager, do you remember this? And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But uh, quite often I can uh, add a little bit to uh, the conversation and, and, and help them out. It's interesting. Longevity has its benefits. But uh, th th there is also time to move on. I certainly, at the age of 82, I'm experiencing that. <laughs> I, I sometimes am reminded that I'm, I think, the last surviving member of the uh, Union 35 school board, the Green Mountain school board that got the bond issue to build that school passed. So that's a, in a way a sad reflection. And it's very interesting because I was an, uh, a senior in high school when, when the union was, was formed and I led the group down the main street of Chester to get the union formed. <laughs> so you probably you doubtless recall that in Cavendish that became a very controversial issue. Understandable too. So I was summarily voted off the board, but then landed back in the fray as the uh, clerk of the works of the construction project. So my, my heart has always remained in the right place, I hope, for that school. Uh, and I'll ask you a question. Do you think it was a move in the right direction? I sometimes have reflections on that. I, uh, I think in, in many respects it was. Uh, it offered a, a measure of stability. Uh, and clearly there, there were advantages to the way the, the, the situation was, where without a, a school uh, that had Cavendish's name on, on the, 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 the board, um, it gave the local people a tremendous array of options. Uh, but there were transportation issues. I, I actually graduated from the old Chester High School. And I remember that at that time the transportation for people from Cavendish consisted of a bus that came as far as the barber shop in Proctorsville, and it cost five dollars a week to to take part of the the bus ride. So uh, a lot of that has changed, of course, and I think for the better. The ability to participate in extracurricular activities, including sports and other things, 
was expanded enormously, and it was a, that continues to be a great benefit. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I, uh, not to, to dwell on controversial issues, but do you have any, any views on the whole gun issue? Uh, any suggestions which way we ought to head with that, that hot potato? It's a new session. Uh, will there be gun control bills presented? I'll really be surprised if there isn't some. Uh, the, the, where they come from and where they go will remain to be seen. Uh, how I vote, I, I don't have, it will depend entirely on how it's worded. Uh, the Second Amendment in the U.S. Constitution is what it is, but it, the Second Amendment still does not give you to the right to carry any weapon anywhere at any time. Uh, last session, uh, there was a, uh, a bill to, to, to prohibit guns in uh, hospitals, and there was uh, also the, the waiting period uh, was, was tied to that, uh, and, and that the governor vetoed it, and uh, there was a compromise arrived at, and the bill passed, and, and it, it, it's so hard. Uh, how did we as a society get into the, the, the problem that we ha are in? Are, is guns the only problem? No, it's not. It's, it's home life. I mean, the problem with drugs is, is significant. There's so many things that are, that are tied together, and guns are one part of it. Uh, it, it what I call it the most important part. To, to the law-abiding citizen isn't the problem. So would, would it more gun control issues, I think that the, this, is before, this is before I was on, in the House, uh, the bill to limit clips I think was very appropriate. It conceivably, um, it, it, the ability to reload a clip with 20 rounds or more versus four gives people time to react to the situation. And, it, it, it's just beyond my comprehension how we've gotten into a point where anybody can walk into a school and kill children. I, I just, so then you go, well, it's mental health. Uh, we, we've, we're dumping a lot of money into the mental health issue. Um, and, and, and I think one of the best things we've done so far is embedding mental health people with the police. Uh, I think we need to do more of that. Uh, I've talked with uh, the commander of the Westminster Barracks, Anthony French, and he's very supportive of the system. He goes, it, it, he goes it, the only problem with it is, is he says it's not enough hours. Uh, troopers and, and local police, when they go to Pittsburgh, are, get mental health training, but they still aren't mental health experts. And when you can team them together, a lot of times situations can be defused without injury, and I think that's really important. So uh, we're on the right track, but unfortunately with, with so many things it takes money, and we, in some areas we need to find the money. And, and uh, as far as, maybe it's on your list, the, the drug problem, um, what we're doing isn't working. Um, it, it, it needs to be rethought out. Um, it, it's just, Unfortunately, the, the town to our south, Springfield, is, is experiencing a tremendous problem with, with drugs and all the uh, illegal activities that come with it. Um, do I have the total answer to it? I don't think anybody does, but I, I think we need to step back and really look at how we're treating a drug addiction. Clearly, it's, it's an issue that is, is very, very important and, and it seems to have defied some, some very, very sincere efforts to, to right the problem for many years now. The war on drugs was an absolute failure. Uh, the evidence is all around us. And uh, so what's, what's the next move? That's the big question. Uh, and we look to people like yourselves and, and other people with, with a good, good view on, on the overall capacity of government to respond and the ability to respond. Another issue, of course, now is the, the personnel shortage. The human resource deficit is, 
is large and it seems to be growing. So particularly in the field of law enforcement, it seems to be a major problem in Vermont. And he, and he takes on that. Interesting, because once again, in, in conversations with both um, our local police chief in Wethersfield and again, Anthony French down in Westminster, uh, there, there was a bill to limit uh, implied immunity to police officers that would um, essentially allow a citizen to, to sue the individual officer uh, if, if he felt he has been wrongly treated, either physically or, or mentally. And the officers have to make decisions on a, in a split second. Um, and if that bill had a passed, it would have hamstrung the ability of, of uh, our police to, to hire new recruits. And I, I think, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I think the, the, the best thing that we have done, um, and, and I, there's still police officers walking around without body cameras. I think every police officer should have a body camera. Not, not necessarily, it, it works both ways. Uh, it protects the officer and it protects the victim. Uh, if, if the officer knows that, that, he, that he's gonna be filmed, he may think twice before he takes a club out and beats somebody silly. Um, on the other hand, uh, if frivolous lawsuits uh, against officers uh, would, would be limited. Um, it's a really tough environment right now. To, uh, who wants to be a cop? Uh, it, it doesn't seem to get any thanks. Uh, it, it's dangerous, inherently dangerous. You're out at night. Quite often, you're, 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 usually you're by yourself. You may not have backup for 20 minutes. Um, and, but yet, we, we, uh, the, the, any effort to defund the police is, is, is false. Um, and, and I think Burlington's experiencing that. They, they, um, there was this big move to defund uh, or, or limit the funding for police in Burlington, and now they, they're hiring the state police to go in and, 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 and patrol their downtown at, on weekends. Yes, so. it certainly seems to have taken a turn for the worse there. Yeah. And it's, it's a heads up, I think, to the rest of the communities in the state that have police departments to, to think very carefully before they make moves in that direction. I agree. Um, I'm fresh out of questions. Do you have any closing comments you'd like to make? Well, um, I want to thank everybody that voted for me two years ago. Uh, I hope I can have your support. Um, I think it's unfortunate that uh, my opponent wasn't able to make it tonight because it would have given viewers an opportunity to compare the two of us a little bit more closely. Um, I, I'm not a big government uh, candidate, um, but I'm also not a candidate that thinks that every program that, that run by the government needs to be cut. Um, I think we need to be more efficient. One thing I've learned is that government tends to be intrinsically in a, I don't want to use the word wasteful, inefficient. Um, and, and I think we need to be very cognizant of how our programs are run and try to get the most bang for our buck. Um, and that's going to become even more important. Um, I, I will say that, that if, if I end out back on education committee, um, um, it, Funding is, is going to be a huge issue. Uh, right now, there's a group looking at uh, tying it to income and, instead of property taxes. And I'll have to see the proof on that one before I would support it. I'm, I'm not convinced that, uh, that tying it strictly to income is, is the right route to go. It, from my perspective, it seems like people with the most money do the best job of hiding their income. and, and all of it seems to fall on, on the people in the middle. And uh, I, yes. some, I, I don't know how you get around that curve. It's a conundrum. It's a very difficult issue, the, 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 where the money's going to come from. Uh, we thought we had it solved with the statewide property tax and all manner of tweaking and adjustments to that. And it still falls short of, of the ideal by by some distance, I won't hazard a guess by how much time will tell. Correct. 
So thank you very much for your participation. And again, my regrets that, that Stu was not able to join us. Uh, but good luck to you. And may the best man win. Thank you, Rolf. And thank you, Okima Valley. And thank you, CCCA, for sponsoring this once again. <laughs>